got no money, but my bills is paid. I'm sitting in the front row at the Tigers game. Two kids at a car note. I'm just trying to get by. I got the love of my baby. We feel good inside. We work so hard for everything we own. Turn off the lights, lock the door, and unplug the phone. Well, it's a good life. Yeah, yeah. It's a good life. Well, well. I ain't got no Mercedes, but that's okay. I got me a bass boat and a Chevrolet. My wife don't play tennis at the country club. We ain't Jones with the Joneses, but we got love. We have ups and downs, you know it's true. We're still having fun no matter what we do. Well, it's a good life. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a good life. Anytime you need throughout the year, you know it's a crusty, good sled. You and Dusty can double on the back with me if you have to. Otherwise, you can ride on this. What do you think? As you see, it's all spit and polished up and ready to go. Um, came out here to hopefully find some deep snow. We're used to just a couple feet and uh, really looking forward to just uh, the experience. So I've had some friends out here before that have done it and they said it was a great time. Looking forward to the mom's experience. We were finally out and into the mountains on our first trip of the year, and guess what? Nothing's changed. Thanks, Jacob. 
The great thing about snowmobilers is that they're always willing to help another snowmobiler out. The snow conditions were a little low this year, and there were a few more obstacles that we had to watch out for. That didn't stop anyone from having a great day in the December Wyoming powder. It sure did feel great to be back in the deep powder. It's been a long summer. We go to various different places throughout the year. Um, one of the, the most frequent in place for us, I guess, just because of the volume of people that want to go to that area, it's a little bit closer to home. Uh, the Snowy Mountain Range that's here at 10 Mile is where we generally stay when we come here. Uh, Snowy Range is not far from Michigan coming out. Uh, it's a good ride. The trails are open real early in the year. Here we are, uh, I think today is the December 11th. Uh, the trails are already, they're not grooming them as of yet, but all the markers are out, the maps are out, and they're passable. We've been out riding on them. We were out riding on them yesterday. Uh, they're always open well early in the year. They're not having to wait for the ice bridges to form to get some of the trails open like you run into in so many other locations you go to riding. Hey, we're at 10 Mile Wyoming, riding out of there this week. We've got the Widowmaker at my back. We're doing a special shoot today with Jamie and Nick from uh, Traverse City, Michigan. They wanted to go out on a special Flatlander shoot with us, and that's what we're doing. We're having a great time. We are finding snow. We found deep snow. We've been getting stuck. We've been having a great time, just like always. You know what? I highly encourage anybody who can come out here to do it, to see stuff like that, and to see the things that we see. It's incredible, it, absolutely incredible. Flatlanders, we're here right now doing it in 10 Mile, Wyoming. I would say, you know, bring enough gear, um, bring, bring a tow rope, bring a, a snow bungee. Even now with the snow conditions a little light for this time of year, I'm sure uh, we've had just about everybody get stuck, so you gotta be prepared for that. Um, as far as riding goes, you know, you're going to want a little longer track out here. I don't think you want to ride a trail sled out here. And, uh, you know, just uh, a little experience in off trail maybe before you come out, before you make the trip. It'll help you a lot. So far, I love it. I've always wanted to come snowmobiling in the mountains. It's the first sled I've had in about five years. I'm a big skier and I'm always out here in the mountains and I've always wanted to bring a sled out and do a, go ride in the backcountry and it's been a lot of fun so far. Nailed that tree or rock or whatever it was going about 50. Hit this right here, pinch the spindle into the A arm, tweak the ski, and now I got about a 15 degree left turn. That's about it. So, should make for a challenging rest of the day, but it could be fixed. No, no harm done. Thank God for the tech vest because I slammed right into my bars going up the side hill. Kind of hoping you didn't get it on camera, but maybe you did. <laughs> We're having fun. Snow's deep. This is what we came out here for. I own a snowmobile rental company in Michigan, boat rental company in Michigan, and uh, my first time out west riding. Wanted to come out here and experience it, and so far we're having a good time. Uh, we expected a little more snow out here, obviously. It's a little warm, I think it's in the 40s today. Probably record highs out here. Um, we did find a pocket of some really deep snow and everybody's managed to get stuck a few times, so it's been fun.
Living up here at Ten Mile is really relaxing. It's very peaceful and quiet. Um, it's a whole new world up here. Come through the canyon and it's a whole new world. Very peaceful, very mountainy. Uh, people are very, very nice. They're very courteous. You never meet a stranger. What seems to be an innocent brush with this pine tree cost us a few hours of snowmobiling a little later in the week. When you come into Ten Mile Inn, you notice that the atmosphere. A lot of people tell us it is the atmosphere. They feel really, really right at home. Um, people just enjoy themselves up here. They get away from the, the busy city life to come up here to enjoy the mountain life. Snowmobiling is excellent up here. We always ask them, did you find enough snow? Oh yes, we found all kinds of snow. With just one fully functional ski, Jamie still keeps it going. I guess he's not the only one with issues. Uh, even though the snow is way steep, I told myself I didn't want to side hill this. Someone else put another track on it. It looks safe enough, and look what I uncovered. With nothing but pride hurt, we head over to the Widowmaker for one last attempt at breaking something. Jacob, Rick, and Nick just couldn't resist a climb on the infamous Widowmaker. Jamie thought better of taking his turn with a broken A-arm. He was probably right. How far do them guys go without looking back? Where's their trail etiquette? Actually, I'm pretty sure he was right. Because a few minutes later, just getting on the trail, a little rope and a little imagination will be what it takes to get his sled back to the 10 mile end. We got one that's straight open because we're gonna have to cut an end opener unless he's open up. No worries. Just do that. Club members Ron and Derek seem to really enjoy their time in the Wyoming Powder. I guess that's not a surprise to me. It doesn't matter the skill level, there's plenty of riding for everyone. I've been wanting to come out here for a long time. It's a, like the powder, I'm always chasing it in the UP, so I figured I'd come out west here and see what this is all about. Oh my God, it can't get any better than this. It's awesome. Uh, if it came between food and snowmobile parts, I think I'd buy the snowmobile parts. I'll find food somewhere else. But all the extra money I got and all my extra time I spend out in the snow chasing it. 
It's a deep powder, beautiful terrain, camaraderie, mom's motorsports, you name it. Well, if you could see my trailer, it says work hard all summer, play hard all winter, and that's the truth. We work, uh, we pour concrete all summer long, save my money so I can come out and do this. Probably the favorite part is playing out in the meadows. And the, as long as there ain't no rocks, you know, but playing out in the deep powder and that's a blast. It's a lot deeper than at home. As soon as I go back and show my buddies the pictures, I'm sure we'll be signing up with a bunch more people coming back out. Getting ready to go cut down a Christmas tree. Stay here at 10 Mile. Christmas time, they make you feel like family. We're gonna go get the tree cut down, bring it back, we'll get it hung up, started to dry out, and then later tonight, we're gonna have a steak dinner. Everybody's gonna help us get it decorated. We'll get it set up. We won't be here for Christmas, but we're gonna leave a good present for everybody. Guaranteed snow Christmas morning. Yeah, I think this one right here, boys. <laughs> If you intend to come out near to the woods and get yourself a tree for Christmas, make sure you have yourself a permit. I believe these are only to, to 10 bucks. Anybody that lives in the county, is that how they do that? So you can go up in the woods and pick your own tree. What a better way to find a tree than come out in the woods. And Kenny had this one spotted this summer, all down through here. He said there's a bunch down through there. We'll find one for sure. So make yourself, yeah, make sure you have a permit before you come and do something like this. You get yourself in trouble. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bell. This is our second year of having MomsMotorsports.com come out and cut down our Christmas tree and drag it in. They went out yesterday and got it 17 foot. We ended up cutting four foot off of it. No, we cut three foot off of it. And this has been a tradition. Last year, Jacob and Paula and Rachel Annie and Rick, they all decorated it. So yesterday, when they brought it in, Rick Sr. was out here and he just enjoyed himself doing it. A lot of them got together and started putting on the decorations. They enjoyed it. Tinsel Street, 10 mile in, Tinsel Street. Where's Waldo? Is that playing in all right? Jingle around. Christmas Well, it's our fifth day out here in 10 Mile, Wyoming. We got about a foot of fresh powder last night. And it's a great time out here with Mom's Motorsports. Well, I've been snowmobiling for a long time in Michigan and put on, you know, four, five, 6,000 miles a year. And nothing in Michigan compares to this. It's got it all. It's got the deep powder, deep enough to get your sled stuck, no matter what kind of sled you ride. You got the smooth groomed trails you got just the cruising through the woods and the deep powder. For one, I would say you think you're a good rider in Michigan, you should come out here and give it a shot. It's a lot tougher, a lot less oxygen. You really work to ride, but it's a great time. A lot of great people out here. We're 10 mile in, they're great people there, great place to stay. So I'd recommend coming out here, giving it a shot. Out here you're pushing a lot of snow. Um, I just got the basic Renegade and just mainly learning the techniques and it's kind of difficult to lean one way and turn your skis the opposite way. That's about the toughest thing. And then you work on side hilling. The more powder, the easier it is to side hill. Man, I bet it's up to your chest out here if you sink to the bottom of all this powder. I can't say I'd want to be any other place. I think I ruined myself coming out here. I'm not gonna want a snowmobile in Michigan anymore. And this is my first time out with a stock sled and I'm having a blast. Remember the tree that Rick had a brush with? 
He tried the rocks this time, and it didn't go so well. We tried a lot of things before we finally got Rick's sled out of that valley, but we do know one thing for sure. We were awfully glad that we had Rick's tow buddy. This isn't the last time you'll see it in this video. I'll also say the same thing for the snow bungee. I thought this would be a great place to put my sled for the day. Unfortunately, Anthony was already there. Rick took my sled and I had to ride on the back with the one that was once mine. Believe me when I tell you, it was quite a ride. The only one not complaining was Dusty because he finally gets to see where he's going instead of where he's already been. It was quite a week at 10 Mile, but it's time to pack up for our next adventure to Cook City, Montana. Cook City, Montana is one of the premier snowmobile destinations of the world. Cook City's miles of fresh powder and scenic lookouts make it a true spectacle for the snowmobiler. We're out here found another mountain view. I don't know if you can beat this one. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, the haze over top and the way it's moving through the mountains is absolutely gorgeous. We're just sitting around here hanging out, just talking a little while and enjoying the scenery. We're going to show you what's going on today on Flatlanders. We're doing it right now in Cook City, Montana. Cook City is right on the outside of Yellowstone Park. It's on the northeast corner. And that's a really good, good time riding up there. It's known for the steep and the deep, and it kind of intimidates people from going up, which that's, that's not right. There's a lot of riding there that the normal person can go out and ride. First time I came out west with a 99 uh, Polaris XC700 with a 136 track on it. I got around and slowly I started getting bigger ones. I got a 2003 SKS with a two inch and, and now I got a 09 RMK155 with a two and a half inch. It hooks up pretty good. I like climbing, side hilling, boondocking in the trees. This year, with the snow conditions not quite what they usually are, the crew struggles to find the holy grail of snowmobiling, fresh powder. Even with the lack of snow, Rick finds a little something he can sink his track into. It costs a quarter to go with them of what it costs you to drive out here and it and you don't have to drive. You can sit back, watch videos. Cook City, it's a nice place. Snow's a little hard today, but we're gonna get some more this week. It's plenty deep. <clears throat> plenty exciting. If I could get my abilities better, I'd have more fun, but <laughs>
Well, I remember we stopped at the old mine and uh, the last thing whenever we started up their engines, Rick said, let's not get too far back in the woods because we got one more hour riding and let's get out of here. And about five minutes later, I think everybody got stuck. Uh, about five, five, five out of seven of us got stuck in there. And... Angry American, leave me alone. <laughs> 151, I wouldn't have been stuck, damn it. Nope. You got a good bite on that. Is that a, that's a 16 wide then, Rick? 15. Oh, I thought you said you had one, it was a 144 bag. That's the one falling. You gotta watch what you're doing. A few guys stuck here and there. Been a pretty good day. Real, real nice and clear today. A little bit of cloud in the valley, as you guys seen earlier, but we've uh, had a pretty good day all in all. It's getting towards the end of the day. We decided to play for one more hour before we go back. We weren't supposed to get a whole bunch of us stuck, but needless to say, there's a few of us stuck. I got another thing to say about that. Look at that. You go to work, ask your boss for a raise. It seems like it works out like this a lot. When it's just about time to go in for the evening, we end up finding a couple more fun spots. Make it to me. Beam me in the head with it. <laughs> It'll make it. Whoa. I'll set it on this side because I know we're going to get a bunch of snow here. Yeah. Where were you going? moment that I get on an Arctic cat and drive it. <laughs> and then we went out and got stuck again and uh, but again we learned how to use the different methods and mechanisms of how to get up the hills and get out of there and uh, so it was a good learning curve. Eh? A lot of work and it's uh, a little harder breathing up here in the higher elevation and walk around the deep snow and you look across and you gotta walk six feet and you think that's a long ways <laughs> or 30 feet you know that's a long ways when it's uh, when you're sinking down the snow but it's fun it's had a great time getting stuck and getting unstuck all right you so called players look here you try to please your woman and your wife too but they both found out and told Try to get them back, but there's no such luck. They both told you that you can get back. Hey, Rob. Let's point our attention down to the other stuck one. Hey, we went around there. Oh. Yeah, that was my first time, and really the first time out west, even snowmobiling, period. And for me, it was kind of a father-son trip. It made it kind of fun, kind of special. So. Got the mountains out here, beautiful snow, and a good group of people. It was just an all-around great trip. We've loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Moved up here in 86, we would have an average snowfall of, of about 500 feet or more. Every year it gets a little less, but back in the old days, from the people I've talked to that's been up here since the 30s and 40s, snow was, could be 20 foot deep, even in town. I think it's pretty much what we expected in one sense, but you never know until you get out here and you start riding things. And uh, I love all the mountains around here, riding up and down the hills, and, and really half the entertainment is watching all these other guys and doing the, the fun riding up and down, and extreme riding, I'd call it more so. But uh, it was fun for us because you could do whatever you want. You could stay down the bottom, you could go up when you wanted to, and different groups of people splitting off in different directions, and just fun riding the deep powder stuff and the trees or, or the hills, whatever you want to do. 
Hold on, hey. It's around Give the back. Oh, it's around the back of the track. Give yeah. him slack, Rick. My old man needs a hearing aid. Huh? Give him slack, Rick. Yeah, come right out of there, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's all the way around the back. You guys are start waiting for the road to the You got it up with the ski there? I watch that thing get wrapped up in the bearings and You're drivers. You're probably fine there, aren't you? I don't know. Yeah, if you just get, you have to be easy on okay. your takeoff. <laughs> Oh, I loved it, you know. It seems like half the fun is getting stuck. Everybody kind of jokes about it. No one wants to get stuck, but uh, as they say, uh, you know, stuck sucks. But it, it's half the fun, too, and half the adventure. And uh, I learned a lot about getting unstuck, which was important, and the different tools and different uh, snow bungee and what have you, and different angles. And it's a lot easier getting people unstuck going downhill and uphill and different things like that. So I learned a lot from other people that have been out here before and how to get unstuck and also prevent from getting stuck and how to pick your lines and how to do a lot of different things I would never learn on my own coming out. Well, one addiction I'm nervous about now is if I'm gonna wanna ride when I go back to Michigan. I'm afraid I'm gonna be bored and just be thinking about wanting to be out here again or somewhere out west and I snow skied out west and I have a hard time now skiing in Michigan and uh, in fact I don't now, my kids are grown, but taught them how to ski. But now I'm gonna go back snowmobiling there. That's, that was my only fear, really, of after having so much fun out here, going back and going, am I gonna be bored to death in that, riding back there? And snowmobiling, I love it anywhere. I love uh, all kinds of sports and doing different things, but that's my only fear, I guess, and addiction is uh, how, how frequently am I gonna to wanna to come back here now. I said, yeah, listen what I say. I think we're gonna to try to go out and find some snow to maybe snowmobile in, it might be blowing a little bit too much, snowing a little too hard, so we might have to come back and sit. And, you know, a lot of guys are getting scared, flakes in the air and stuff, you know. <laughs> you gotta try it once. You gotta try it at least once. Yes, there's dangers out here, it's dangers of the sport. Bear call Bob's, he'll tell you right off the bat where not to go and ride. Uh, a lot of safe areas to ride, yes, there is dangerous, but no, there's a lot of safe areas to ride. Riding with the Flatlanders was, was you know, you, you see these videos on TV and you think, you know, these guys are in Hollywood or tricks or, or whatever they're doing on, with camera, but it's really not. To see what a, um, somebody who really has some skill, what they can do on a snowmobile, it's unbelievable. It's, it's really amazing. Snowmobiling has come to a whole new other, an, an, another level, I feel. So I, I was just very impressed. And they made me feel comfortable too. It, you know, they, they take care of you when you're out there. I never felt like I was out of my comfort zone. If you didn't want to do something or you didn't feel you were capable of it, you just didn't do it. If you wanted to challenge yourself and do it, then by, you know, do it. Tell me what it's like uh, being a rock star. If I was a rock star, I wouldn't have to wear holy <laughs> What happened, Kevin? I went up a chute and turned out a group of trees and had to split them. Pretty good branch and caught me. And we're here at Cook City, Montana. We're back out here doing it again in the steep and deep. Snow levels are a little low right now, but guess what? We're still having a good time. We're out with a whole group right now, kind of hanging out, enjoying each other's company and taking a run of some shoots here. Well, we left Michigan Friday evening and we're out here now Sunday morning out in the steep and deep. At home, there was no snow and I even heard it was raining. Well, as you can see, there's snow and here we are doing it in Cook City, Montana.
Where are the things going like Big shoot here. And I got kind of side to side and got kind of knocked off and around and held on and my boot got sucked into the track along with my foot. Took me down about 20, 30 feet before I gouged in enough to, to make it stop otherwise. You were going for a hell of a ride. I was going for a long ride and I probably would have lost my leg. See Jacob's come down, a heart, he could barely stop, he ran over my helmet and yeah. Mayhem in the mountains, Cook City, Montana. I've already undid my snap, and I'm hoping I can pull my foot out. Ah. 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 Well, I'm free of the sled at least. Kinda. Well, how are we gonna get that boot? Either gonna have to go forward and out or back and out. You're hey, lucky you didn't break your damn leg that toe up in there that far. You're real lucky. How'd you get it inside like that? You don't know, do you? Know, it's happened. When I was holding on to it after I came up and knocked off the sled, I held on to it and. That's the prize. <laughs> the trophy of the day. I think Klein makes a good pair of boots, man. Not a scratch on it. I'd have to stand by those. Whoa. <sighs> Not a hurt. scratch. Nothing broken. Ah. Well, as fun as that was, it's time to go see what other adventures the mountain has in store for us today. Love it. Never been out here before. I uh, just heard it from the guys that I ride with a lot. They've been out to various places and said that uh, you got to go. We do a lot of riding back in Michigan, up in the UP, and we have a good time and just thought it'd be a good thing to do and very enjoyable. Back to Bear Claw Bob's. Get something to eat. Stay at Cook City. Still running. <laughs> All the pieces are yes. still here. <laughs> what about the facelift? Well, when you get old, I guess you gotta have a facelift, and that tunnel was pretty old, so there's a couple pieces that are the same. The steering handle of the bars are the same. Uh, the speedometer is the same, the cowl is the same. Other than that. Lots of new parts. Headlights the same? Section. Same headlights? Same headlights. They're daylight headlights only there. Out here uh, doing a little bit of boondocking up in the trees. First day out for Dusty. He kicked back the first two days. There wasn't enough snow for him. So he got a little bit of powder coming down and he loves it when there's powder out here. So decided to come out here and do a ride with us. It's early season riding up here, a uh, little bit short on snowfall this year, but as you can see, there's still plenty of stuff out here. Stuff's starting to base up, actually. Uh, you get up on top a little bit and st stay over the top. You can see some rocks. We're running up over some stuff. You can feel them underneath, but you don't necessarily got to bounce off them to get up here and have a good time. Just watch, pick and choose your lines up through the trees. A lot of other tracks through here you can cross cut back and forth, and that's part of boondocking. You know, uh, having a good time venturing around. If you get stuck behind the trees, do a little bit of digging, wait for some guys. And uh, you know, we, we have a good time boondocking. That's what we like to do. Boondocking in the trees, finding a little bit of fresh snow here and there. The new stuff's coming down, kicking it in Cook City.
we decided to try the woods today. We wanted to see uh, if there was some deep snow in there and kind of what we could find if we if there were some nice places to explore. So far all we found is stuck. It's pretty powdery and pretty deep back here but uh, we're having a good time. Jacob was hung up on a tree a second ago. I was stuck a little while ago and uh, Ron was up against a tree needed some help. It's been one of those days so far. We're having a great time in Cook City, Montana. I told the guys to follow Jacob because we had a great shot lined up. Jacob was the only one to make it through. The rest of the guys had to dig their way out. Cook City, Montana, good time boondocking up in the hills, that's for sure. You do gotta pick and choose your lines real careful. Rob told us, follow Jacob. Everybody took off following Jacob, got up there, them guys were stuck up the top of the hill. I looked and I said, what are we supposed to follow him to? <laughs> well, but for hey, the- Hey, this is the fun of it, man. We enjoy riding out here. For the record, Jay, we at least got a good shot of Jacob coming down. Yeah, I know, Jacob made it up and around. I don't think Ron's actually stuck either. Kevin's not really that hung up bad. They'll be out in a second. We'll be on our way. We'll go find something else to get down through. Well, when we so, get here, we're kind of here as a club and a whole group, but it's dang near impossible to get out there and boondock and explore and have a good time with 13 to 20 people. So we divide up into groups and, hey, I don't like riding with everybody every single day. and. A lot of people don't like my riding style, so we kind of segregate into groups and maybe some guys will go trail riding, some guys will go boondocking, and maybe some guys will hit the chutes and do some climbing for the day. Should have brought your sleigh up here. Had a total of 19 people all together come up here to Cook City. Had some guys fly in, stayed next door. Had a bunch of us staying at the Super 8 there, eating uh, at the Bear Claw Bakery with Terry and Bob. Uh, out here having a good time. We split up into a smaller group today. Some of the original Flatlanders out here uh, getting some shots. And Dusty, Dusty's along with us. He's one of the original Flatlanders. He co-founded the company with us, and we're looking for a good... <laughs> <laughs> we're up here, we're up here just kind of monkeying around no pun intended. Oh, oh, yeah. The best thing about video is you can stick, cut it out. Who um. said we're cutting that out? <laughs> Cook City, Montana, you can't beat it, man. Well, we decided to, or Jacob decided to make a little beeline up the hill into the trees, and we followed right along, and we proceeded to get stuck one after the other. Actually, for a climb like this, we're following a little too close. Doesn't give you much of an exit if someone in front of you runs into difficulty. So, but no harm, no foul. Little digging. Half hour, 45 minutes later, we're out of there. So, not too bad. And stuck again on the way we just came down. Yeah, I, the route Jacob came down, I followed him down after we got everybody stuck. Turned those guys around and Rick and Ron proceeded to decide that they want to go up and <laughs> see what the top of the hill looked like and I don't think they still have seen what it looks like. They haven't made it there. Well you guys, no time like the present. I got me one of them bear claw bear claws from Bear Claw Bakery down there. I'm sitting on the side hill all by myself so nobody can get a bite of it, just me. It's all mine. <laughs> Raspberry too by the way. Go out to Cook City, make sure you go to the Bear Claw Bakery. Tell Terry Mom from Motorsports and the Flatlander sent you in there. Hopefully she'll have some raspberry if we haven't ate them all. You might get lucky and get some apple and blueberry. Oh. <laughs> Yeah! Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I thought I had that too, it fell right on the kill switch, man. All it is is straight up and down. You can be able to catch it right out of there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Through that <motorcycle. laughs> That's why when you're mountain riding, you shouldn't run with them kill switches on top. Prime example, fell right in the kill switch right when I needed the power. The guys take a few moments to play before helping Rick get his snowmobile out. Well, we've reached the end of day three and we've been fighting the snow all day. We found some great powder and we got plenty stuck. The snow's coming in. This is exactly what we've been looking for. It's been a tough day. We got stuck a lot, deep powder, but you know what? We still had a great time. People ask us, how can you have a great time when you're stuck all the time? I can't explain it. You just have to come out here and do it. Flatlanders, Cook City, Montana, right now. Hi, I'm Rick Mom with Mom's Motorsports and Flatlanders. We're all here at Cook City, fourth day. Uh, looks like it's gonna be a real clear day today. Yesterday we got a little bit of fresh snow up in the hills, uh, four to six inches, different spots. We heard different reports from a few guys. We stayed in the trees yesterday, as you see from our footage. Uh, did a little bit of boondocking, be able to see in the trees a little bit more. So today we're gonna end, wind down in the valley down there and see if we can find some side hills and some good powder shots and stuff like that. Get some nice wide open shots, take advantage of this beautiful sun and a beautiful blue sky day we had. We played all day. We didn't have a care in the world. The only thing that mattered was the snowmobiling. This was the kind of day we dream about all spring, summer, and fall. With lots of fresh powder, blue skies, and the majestic Rocky Mountains, we were all in snowmobile heaven. One thing I like about Cook City too is you're right in the mountains already and it's an easy trail ride up in the mountains and so I'm not a big trail rider even back in Michigan. I ride from my house and that's it. I'm not in the 100 miles an hour for 100 miles type of thing. Out here uh, it's a lot more skill based I think from a balance and slower speed and, and obstacles and deeper snow and I just enjoy that a lot better and I think it's ultimately a lot safer too. This was one of those days that everything about snowmobiling makes perfect sense. The blue skies, soft powder, and great temperature had us having the time of our lives riding out of Cook City, Montana. Every day on the snowmobile is a good day, but days like this are few and far between, and we all took full advantage of our fortunes. I jumped into my boat a race to my favorite creek I'm done that St. G That I called the mall last week I thought I hooked a stump My life began Every time I'm here, I'm struck by the awesome powder and grand views. This is truly a snowmobiler's paradise and worthy of its reputation. Look at that sound That the man on the bank said I can smell the grease cooking in the ski. No, oh, that's great. It's uh, see your friends having fun and going through the same experience as you are and share it, share it with each other and be able to talk about it at home. That's cool. To me, there's more here. There's the big hills for 
you guys that want to climb hills and there's more there's open meadows it's a great time here it came up so slowly and then it began to flow I thought to myself look at that the truck isn't always the mode of transportation out west alternatives like flying are also available I like flying Rick told me when my sled was going to be here, so I just made all the arrangements myself, met my sled here, and I know when it's leaving, so I booked my trip after there, got my rental car, and it was, it was beautiful. I mean, that's, that's just my personality. If a guy wants to ride in the truck, that's for him, great. If he doesn't, fly in, that's great too, either way. Can't go wrong. Took the suds over to Reed City, loaded all our gear, and then went home, slept for the night, got up the next morning. Took a carry-on, jumped on the plane, and we were here. It was nice. I wasn't worried about the snowmobile at all. And I took the snowmobile over to where it was going in Reed City with Rick and met all the guys there and helped them put the snowmobiles in placement. Felt very secure about everything. As far as flying out here, I thought I was going to get here quicker. <laughs> Obviously, we got here at the same time, so um, you know, I, I, don't, I would I'd take the truck next time, definitely. Smell it. Cooking the mosquito now. Can you smell the grease? Cook it up, my brother. Cook it up. We don't often do a lot of high marking, but when the conditions are right and we come across the right mountain face, then all bets are off. Ron, Rick, and Jacob give it their best shot, and it looks like they're having a blast. Out in the mountains, the plane is endless. The terrain goes on and on. Just when you think it's been all used up, you find another play place just over the next ridge. That the man on the bank said, Ooh wee, ooh wee. Now I can smell the green. Over the years, we have come to know Bearclaw as one of the most generous and knowledgeable mountain men. He is always willing to sit down with us and tell us about the area. Mining started in roughly late 1800s, like 1890, it lasted till 1950, 55. Uh, be truthful, what the old prospectors found was probably two, three ounces of gold out of all those years. Uh, they consider the gold up here a powder gold, like baby powder. It's nuggets, it's not like nuggets or anything that you find in most average mines. It takes more of a process to uh, claim it. So like I said, it, a lot of it was not processed or claimed at that time. 1988, there was a company called Naranda. 
They were out of Canada, came in and started exploration. By 1994, they had probably drilled anything, everything they could on Henderson Mountain and from above or underground. And the gold dust, after they had everything drilled and, and analyzed, they, the old timers had probably missed it by 80 feet at the back of the vein of the gold dust. Uh, they estimated that ore body at that time in 94 was $800 million. Gold was only worth $235 an ounce at that time. The miners were fairly intelligent enough, they can look at a slope and tell if it's going to slide or not. So they had moved all their cabins away from a sliding area or run out areas. Um, most, I'd probably say 80% of what I've been told and read that 80% left in the winter time but there was still 20% stayed up here. Um, so they built it, like I said, they built the cabins away from avalanche areas. Every year it gets a little less but back in the old days from the people I've talked to that's been up here since the 30s and 40s, the snow was, could be 20 foot deep even in town. So getting supplies up there uh, was tough. Everything was snowshoed in. There was no snow, snowmobiles and stuff back in that time. Well, you can scratch the itch at home. You know, I mean, you, you get your little fix, but to come out here, if you really want to get what you're looking for, you got to come out here. If you like to snowmobile, um, to me, I mean, snowmobiling is great, but if, if you're really into it, to come out here and play in the deep snow, that, that's the ultimate. There's nothing better. We're heading up. We're just going to have a little shorter trip today. We're going to go up and do an interview with Bear Claw Bob. Uh, he's going to tell us a little about some avalanche dangers and what to look out for and maybe a few other things up there. After that, we're going to take a little ride with Kevin and Ron to see what trouble we can get into. Jacob and Rick are staying back today because they've got some stuff to do to be ready for our next trip in another week back to Cook City. So we're going to go out and have fun, see what trouble we can find. Cook City has, uh, I feel, the best riding areas in Montana. They're close to town, you don't have to travel very far. Two miles and you're out in the back country. There's Daisy Pass, which is to the west of us, half a mile. We are sitting on Lulu Pass at this time. Then we've got Scotch Bonnet, which is right over this mountain ridge to the east. Uh, another good popular riding area is uh, Round Lake and north of Round Lake. The awareness that a snowmobile needs to, to be aware of is uh, the, the loading of the slopes, the drifting of the slopes. Uh, watch areas where if you see lines of trees with open spaces, that's an avalanche area. There, that's a reason there's no uh, trees growing in that area because of avalanches. Um, just be aware, just be cautious. I like this. The slope here that you can see that little ridge line on the opening there. Yes. That is that what they call like a, a pillow or a wind load? Would that be like where the snow is drifted over? Your wind loads are, like I said, mostly on your west, eastern facing slopes, mm -hmm. not your west. Um, this slope on Lulu here, it seems like with the trees, the numerous trees we have in this area, it catches the snow and sets it up above, in the, uh, up on the top of the ridge more. Okay. And then it just kind of keeps on uh, building its way down. And then when people come in here and see this nice open area, not a really an open area, but these chutes that, that look untouched or that are untouched and say, geez, that looks like a good area. But they don't realize that area is an avalanche area. Or in it's a certain, untouched for a reason. And that's right, because oh. you, if you see over in this area here from the top down, mm -hmm. there's lines of trees with open spaces in oh, between, yeah. okay? Yeah. 
And that's the reason there's open spaces because no trees can grow because it is an avalanche area. If you, if you would go down to the bottom of Lulu, you'll see the cabins, the old miners' cabins, uh -huh. and they knew where to build their cabins so they would not be in a runout area or an avalanche area. They knew. Just isn't also isn't in the old miners' cabins down there where they have the uh, cache of avalanche probes. Yes, that? yes. Okay. Down at the bottom of the cabins, there's a cache on top of Henderson, and there's a cache over on top of Daisy. Okay. And there's one over by uh, Round Lake Cabin. You've got your avalanche chutes, in which they are playing in them right now. You've got one stuck, you had one go up above him, and actually cut a trough, and that weakened that area. So that could slide any minute. Now you've got two guys up there, and if it slid, they wouldn't have a chance. They would not have a chance. They were playing in the second shoot over. So they weakened that whole area now. This is what I'm trying to tell you, just to be observant, be, be aware of avalanche shoots. Then if you want to swing over, they are in, these, this group down here is in a run out zone, is what they call it. So when that avalanches, it will come down and actually probably will take them out if they can't get their sled started and get out of the way. One of our favorite places to ride is Top of the World, Wyoming. It's just a short ride out of Cook City, and Top of the World has never let us down. The scenic ride to the warming hut is exactly what we're looking for before we hit the Wyoming snow. I wonder what could possibly go wrong. It was a little intimidating at first. Um, I, this is my first time out here, but you know, for the guys that think they can do it all, then by all means get out here and do it. And if you don't do it and you're not used to riding out there, out here in the, in the big hills, and the skills that you learn out here, just they can't help but make you a better rider no matter where you're gonna ride. There's something everywhere you look, there's, there's sights to be seen. Whether you're in the trees, there's rocks, and you come into the open meadows, and there's another mountain. Off in the distance, everywhere you look, there's, there's something to see. The bungees were put through quite a test with the big turbo Yamahas. One guy loved his Yamaha so much that he bought an Articat before we left Cook City. He wanted it to be ready when he returned to Cook City in a couple of weeks. We got to talk about that, why? We can't talk about the rock that I jumped over and you were taking picture of me and powder flying everywhere. We got to talk about me being stuck. I find that the snow conditions are different at every location, every trip, just about every day. Uh, they say well, no snowflake is ever the same and you can find it out there. And you can find conditions, deep powder, it bases up. Um, sugar, snow, all sorts of stuff. Well, we're looking to have a good time and get off the couch, just have fun for the winter. Uh, the type of riding we like to do varies. On the deep powder days, you like to get in the meadows and just do some powder turns and some curves. On the uh, sunny days, it's fun to get up in the trees and boondock a little bit and explore and do some hill climbing. And then on the real good days, when there's some base and you know the rocks are covered up, it's fun to shoot up into those chutes and that's a real adrenaline rush to get up in there. That's what I like, the deep snow, and to be able to watch Rick and Jacob, that's uh, pretty awesome. Like Jim was saying, you see you know, all this stuff on TV and think, man, I'd like to be able to do that. And when you get out here and you get the chance to do it, you find out how hard it really is. Come out here, we ride in Michigan all the time and there's some great riding, but to come out here and see the hills, climb the hills, Splash it in the powder. I mean, it's it's awesome. We got to try it. There we ride out of Cook City. We go to over into Wyoming, 
place called Top of the World. You've heard of that on the videos that we've did. And probably heard people talk about that. that's a great place to ride. We really enjoy riding there. It's a 30 mile trail ride over alone. When you get over there, there's a lot of trails that you can bomb around on as well. Come off the side of a hill and I come down and, sh you know, I knew there was rocks out there. They're, they're, they're everywhere. You can't help it. And just luck of the draw, I hit one, flipped it on its side, kicked me off. And, you know, riding in Michigan, where I'm from, you know, it just doesn't happen very often. So here's your sled halfway rolled over and you're looking at it. And the only, only way to get it down is to roll it over. And it's just, an, it's an uncomfortable feeling, but you know, I rolled it over, went over twice, no harm, no foul. You know, a couple hand guards come off, you know, a couple $20 items, and uh, it, was, it was an experience. Like I said, it, it, I challenged, tried to challenge my myself every day, and you know, now I can say, say I rolled my snowmobile over a couple times. So. We had a great day with the Yamaha guys, and I think they did too. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest or the worst rider. There is fun to be had by all. The top of the world has proven one more time that it's worth the trail ride. The worst thing about the day is that it had to end. Fortunately, there is another day, and Jacob, Rick, and I went out on a quest to find virgin powder. Our work would be cut out for us since we didn't have any new snow for a few days or so. The one thing that I'm sure of now is that if you look hard enough, you'll find what you're looking for. A lot of the guys that go with us um, have their own beacons, know how to use them. We do try to have a few extra beacons for somebody that wants to borrow one for the day. We, we try not to ride into them areas. However, when you're out here in these areas, a lot of the area you, you figure isn't an avalanche area, very well could be. And not to scare nobody away, you just gotta be prepared for anything. It only takes six foot of snow or more to start to trap a guy deep enough, you're not gonna be able to get that guy out of the snow. Um, so we all are trying to really uh, learn a little bit more about avalanches. We took some avalanche safety classes. We look forward to some more avalanche safety classes. What a great day we've had so far. Started out pretty darn cold this morning, but as we got up here in the high country, it's starting to get a little bit nicer and warm up today. We're just messing around. Not gonna do much more than that, right here on Flatlanders out of Cook City, Montana. Cook City is one of the best snowmobile places I've been to so far, destinations. A um, little, little low on snow this year, but we found lots of powder. I think I was stuck more in the last two days than anyone else in our group, so we're having lots of fun. Here at Cook City, time to do some repairs. Want to get a longer track underneath my sled. Got some extensions from Tracks USA, planning on putting them on. Get a 151 back underneath there. I tore the track out their first ride this season. Some of you guys probably caught that online. I want my 151 back. I'm, I'm missing it. I guess it's a little extra weight that I'm carrying. Maybe maybe it's just a good excuse, but we're going to try to get it in tonight. And hopefully we'll have that back out tomorrow. If not, I'll ride my spare sled tomorrow. Cook City, Montana, Bear Claw Bob's, Bear Claw Bakery. It's a place to hang out. Good times.
Going back up to the top of the world today in search of deep powder. Went out yesterday and it was a little tracked up and had a tough time finding what we were looking for. Our guess is that there's plenty of it over the top of the world. We're gonna show you that right now. The conditions weren't great when we first got over to the top of the world. Jacob got stuck and Chris, a first timer with Mom's Motorsports, decided to give Jacob a hand. Sure enough, he got stuck too. That doesn't matter because so was everybody else. As soon as we got Jacob and Chris out, we were on our way to help someone else. Everyone was stuck and we were all having a ball once again on the top of the world in Wyoming. Well, I hope so. I really appreciate you not hitting me, Wayne. Well, that'll be the last time I point the camera at you today. Well, maybe one more time, but that's it. Thanks for not hitting me, though. If you've seen our last video, you'll know that whatever Jacob can do, Rick can do better. And today was no exception. Yeah. Well, Rob. Started out, we were playing over there. We got some nice little donuts off the side of there and shaving the, shaving the side. I look back here, I seen Jacob got brave, got up and went around the top. Had to loop around twice, I got up on her and I was gonna shave this whole edge, come across the bottom. Started sliding out on me there. I didn't want to get caught up between that tree. I just give her a shove, man, because I didn't know what was down here. I didn't want to come jumping off onto it. I just let her roll. They got together in Detroit. They don't want to scratch the paint. <laughs> hey, yeah, we gotta dig more. No, no. Oh my god, I landed on a rock. Glad I didn't <laughs> ride her down. Ski <laughs> straight. I ride the down. I was. I, I figured there was <laughs> in here, you know. I never thought riding down shoot. was even an option. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't planned on it at all. I'm embarrassed to have a windshield anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for good measure, 
Jacob shows his dad how it's done. I'm gonna wait, but you know I'll be back one day. I'm gonna wait. As usual, Rick just can't help giving it one more shot. With no time to waste and daylight fading, we play hard one more time before taking the trail back to Cook City from the top of the world. I can tell something just don't seem right. I can tell something just don't seem right. When we're in Cook City and we're leaving out of here, we always try to stop by Buns and Beds and grab a sandwich on our way out. You know, if you're ever up here, go and give them a hand. Say hi to Jan and see how she's doing. They're really good people and they make some really good sandwiches. Welcome Flatlanders. We got a special day today. Sid from Climb is here with us. We're gonna go out in Island Park. We're gonna go mess around, do some interviews, see if we can uh, find some powder. I hear it's been a little bit of a struggle. I didn't go out yesterday. But you know what? We're gonna go out. We got a beautiful blue sky day once again. It looks to be a fun day of snowmobiling. We'll show you what we've got right here on Flatlanders. Climb's been in, uh, in the business of building snowmobile clothes for about 18 years and uh, really saw a need with the progression of mountain sleds and the conditions and the areas that we were riding sleds that we needed to have more technically advanced snowmobile gear than what was currently on the market. And so that's the, uh, that's the rider that we really are in business to try and, and outfit. Well, Climb is so is expensive because it's the only snowmobile gear on the market that's guaranteed for life. You know what Rob, there's a lot of real exciting things going on at Climb right now and we've got projects that uh, we're putting a lot of time and effort into that the consumer really probably won't see for three to five years. So I see Climb continuing to be the leader in technical riding gear and to stay on the cutting edge of technology um, and we're going to continue to invest a lot of money uh, in the development of better and more technical snowmobile riding apparel. Well, the great thing about what uh, Flatlanders is doing and what, what Moms is doing is, is they're, they're providing an avenue, they're providing a, a, a way for someone to to progress from being, say, a trail rider or maybe a flat landing snowmobiler into becoming a, a, you know, a skilled mountain rider. And unfortunately, there's no uh, quick ways to get from one to the other. Uh, it just takes a lot of time in, on a sled. It takes a lot of practice. And, uh, you know, that's the great thing about what you guys are doing is, is you're providing that avenue for people to experience. And uh, you're allowing them to take snowmobiling to a different level and I think once they come out and have this experience, they're going to want to come back for more. And every time they come, they're going to increase their skill level and it's going to become an addiction.
Now that we're back to Bear Claw Bob's in the Super 8, everybody is primed and ready for the steep and deep after a long ride on the truck. This is the third trip to Cook City this year, and it's starting to feel like home away from home. Ron, the Yamaha guy, has finally got his new Articat, and Bob is helping him attach his accessories so the whole gang can get out to the mountain. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. They just got a bunch of snow. We're in search of the deep powder. We're only gonna be out here for a couple hours today because we had a lot of things we had to get ready for the rest of the week when we got in early this morning in the Cook City. We're still having a good time. What a day it's been so far. Hopefully the rest of the week we'll do the same. From Cook City, Montana and the Flatlanders. When out in the mountains, accidents do happen. I was coming out of the trees and heading into the meadow when I noticed Jacob waving at me. I thought he was impressed with my last move in the trees. I guess not. He was warning me about a stream that wasn't quite covered. We're not sure how it happened, but we think that when Jacob pulled out Bob's rental, the track threw a rock into the cooler. Good thing we got Rick and his tow buddy. This here's what they call a tow buddy. Strap this thing underneath, you got a bad chain case track locked up, rip a track off completely. Whatever you got, you put this tow buddy underneath there and it allows you to pull it out of the woods a lot easier than having that track trying to get down through the snow and pull through there. It's gonna be a to keep it up on there. Yeah. Back to Bear Claws for an earful and a late night in the shop. Am I right? Yeah. That's where the blood was coming from. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to weld this, fill that back in without filling the whole hole in. Obviously, you don't want it to adhere to the other side. It might end up adhering a little bit to it. Actually, everything that we did is simpler than to do. Is it? I, I hate to say that. I'm ashamed to say that. Did you, get, did you get that copied? Yeah, I had my head all the way up a cat's ass and I figured out they were easier to work on than a skidoo almost. Almost. That's not what I heard. <laughs> I know what you heard. <laughs> well, at least it's not Bear Claw's rental again. This time it's Jacob's turn. Hey, we're heading out to one of our favorite places today, and guess what? It's Jacob's turn. His chain case blew up on him. We we're just kind of heading down the road, just off the, in the ditch here. He's just kind of putts along, waiting for the rest of us to catch up, and kaboom. Well, he's probably going to have to head back. Uh, I don't know quite what the day's going to do for us now, but. Uh, Typical Flatlander day. You never know what's gonna happen. We'll show you a little bit more of it right now. I towed him back to the shop and we grabbed the other sled and we're back on the way to top of the world, Wyoming. We caught up to the gang just behind the warming hut. It looks like everyone is having a great time. It's really affordable, cheaper than riding in Michigan. Michigan has nothing like this to offer. So that's why I come out here, fun time, freedom. I don't have to see anybody, I don't have to deal with anybody, and I don't have to worry about somebody coming around a corner and surprising me, you know. Snowmobile addiction, uh, I don't know, just addicted, <laughs> I guess it's like a drug. It's a good example of why you should look over a hill before you come up and decide to jump off it or start to carve. I come up off the top, we're just going to carve off and come back down towards them guys. Hit that edge, I couldn't see nothing, the sled was going, and I said, I ain't riding it because I don't know where it's going, man. Looks like it just landed powder, it'd be fine, man.
I like Cook City the best. Got the best riding to offer. A lot better than some of the other places I've been to. Yeah, help Rick and Jacob drive the truck out here loading stuff. They live hour south of me, so they pick me up right on 131 by my house. We get along real good, help them wrench on stuff. They help me out, I help them out, and it's a good thing. Good thing they got going. It's the country, it's the scenery, it's it's a hobby I love to do, a sport I love to do, you know, and love the snowmobiling and the country. So far the people have been great any place I've been with them. Uh, most, more sports have been great on the transportation, bend over backwards for you any way they can. Whether you're in the trees, there's rocks and you come into the open meadows and there's another mountain. Off in the distance, everywhere you look, there's there's something to see. Just uh, you know, being with these guys and even Rick's crew, Rick and Jacob's crew, and with you, you know, they make you feel at ease. Um, just being out there, everybody looks after one another, and I didn't uh, feel this out of, this out of place at all. Some nut come be loose behind the wheel back up there, I guess. I lined up, I was gonna jump over here and pad it down a little bit. Thought I had it soft enough to come off on that side. As soon as I hit the rock, it threw me over this way. I fell on the throttle, <laughs> was trying to get off from it and run right down through this little canyon here. I dove off from it, man. I thought I was gonna go endo when it fell off the little edge here. Yeah, the anticipation, I guess, of just being out in the bigger mountains and the bigger riding and, you know, and just packing the right gear and what are you going to wear and what are you going to take and the different weather conditions and foods. It's been a good experience. We took the avalanche safety class, which we enjoyed that, appreciated that. To me, there's more here. There's the big hills for you guys that want to climb hills and there's more, there's open meadows. It's a great time here. I just think that everybody, uh, whoever's an avid snowmobile rider, should at least get the chance to come out here, whether it's here or any of the other states that you guys go to. And you've been very helpful, and Rick and Jacob, and just a good bunch of guys, good crew. It was definitely worth coming out here, and I'd like to try to get out here again even this year. Um, whether it happens or not, that remains to be seen. But uh, definitely for next year, it's, it's going to be on the calendar. Cook City, Montana has never failed to impress. After several trips to Cook City, I have never heard anything but what these guys are telling you. It is one of the most awe-inspiring places I have ever been. If you get a chance to go to Cook City, I highly recommend making the trip. If you get a chance to stop by Bear Claw Bob's, tell him the Flatlander said hi. Until next year, keep the track side down if you dare. to the country.